Hello again, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, as promised, I wanted to uh, give you additional information from what I spoke about in my last podcast, where I uh, illustrated biotoxin illness in simple terms. Uh, today, I wanted to illustrate Marcons. Remember, I asked many of you, all of you actually, you know, wherever possible, to do a deep nasal swab to rule out Marcons. Yes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, what is Marcons and what happens. What is the mechanism that Marcons affects the body, right? So let me go ahead and share my screen. And today we will be discussing multiple antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph. That stage of biotoxin illness will be explained further. Welcome to the BioNexus Health Podcast with Dr. Jodi A. Dashaw, who holds a PhD in integrative medicine, is board certified in integrative pediatrics, an internationally recognized pioneering clinician, and author. And now here's your host of BioNexus Health Podcast, Dr. Jodi A. Dashaw. An educational flyer that I use for Formula One NSB, you know, you guys know what that is, but this is the best explanation I have for what is Marcon's and what happens, right? Okay, so uh, this is one aspect of the biotoxin illness pathway. I explained the entire pathway in my previous podcast. So let's look at the four main ways Marcon's can harm your immune system, your brain, and your body. Okay, so number one, Marcons exist inside your sinuses, deep nasal cavities. That's where they exist. They are capable of producing biofilm. What does biofilm do? It makes them harder to eradicate. They develop or have the capability of being resistant to multiple antibiotics. I have patients that will come to me and say, you know, and they have a history of a, um, doing a tremendous amount of medical intervention for their sinuses, you know, sinus inflammation, uh, congestion, blockage, severe allergies, nonstop sneezing, nasal pain, headaches, uh, pain behind your your eyes, you know, these are some of the things that I've heard um, my patients complain of when I see them for the first time. Of course, Marcon's has not been evaluated for. Uh, a, a basic test is done, usually reveals nothing. Many patients have undergone uh, one to many surgeries trying to get relief with minimal. Uh, things just keep coming back. Many have seen uh, the best practitioners in the world without being able to uh, decode what is going on. Uh, so this is something very important to know if you have sinus issues and all the other symptoms that I just men uh, mentioned that, you know, sinus issues pretty much that never go away. You do antibiotics, you feel good for a few days, keeps coming back. Okay. And understand that. The more antibiotics that you try, the chances are that the antibiotic resistance will increase. Very smart bacteria, these are, okay? So what happens? Right on the top, there is the legend that explains this uh, graphic here. So there's the biofilm. You need to be aware that there is biofilm, you know, these gray strands that you see, that's the biofilm matrix. Uh, the, the green circle that you see is the staph bacteria or Marcon's. The blue and purple are the two exotoxins that are secreted. These exotoxins cross over the blood-brain barrier. All right, this hexagon is the hemolysins that are also secreted. 
the cube is the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone that I spoke about in the previous video on biotoxin illness explained. And this, uh, the right angle triangle is the pro-inflammatory cytokines that come into play as well. Okay. So uh, let me make it bigger. Oh, wait, that doesn't want to go away. Okay, no problem. All right, now at least it's a bit bigger. Right, so Marcons are acquired when you're living in a moist, damp, or you're exposed to, not necessarily living in, it could, could be at work, uh, exposed to a water-damaged environment. Damp, moist, moldy. You can smell, you know, the mildew. So that is where you will develop Marcons because of what happens with mold illness, right? Your, the mold illness, inflammation, the lowering of your hormones, hormonal dysregulation eventually leads to immune dysfunction. You acquire Marcons. So these multiple antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph bacteria, they release exotoxins A and exotoxin B, which as you can see here, A and B cross over the blood brain barrier, go into the basal ganglia, the hypothalamus, other regions in the brain, and one of the things that it does is the melanocyte stimulating hormone molecule is damaged. It's split. When it's split, it's not alpha MSH anymore, right? So all of the functions attributed to alpha MSH are nullified. Your alpha MSH levels plummet. So let me recap what I had mentioned in my previous video. I had mentioned what happens, hormonal dysregulation, endocrine dysregulation, the pituitary hormone effects, right? Pituitary uh, regulation of your hormones is affected negatively, of course. Uh, sleep regulation, your circadian rhythms, your uh, absorption uh, and assimilation of nutrition in your gut inflammation control in your gut, inflammation control in your body, including the brain, these areas are damaged. Okay? And it kind of becomes a vicious circle. Marcons reduce MSH, and the lower the MSH you have, the higher the probability of Marcons. So this is where, you know, uh, when we treat patients with Formula One, for uh, Marcons or any other treatment for Marcons. If, if, if you're a fan of antibiotics, you know, that's, that's available as well. Um, so when they are treated, the labs are negative. And as we monitor their health every six months, every year, the Marcons keep coming back. The symptoms keep coming back. Why is that? Because they have not remediated their environment. They're still being exposed or they are still in a water damaged environment. So it becomes a vicious circle. Okay, now let's go back to one, two, and three. So one, the Marcons release exotoxins A and B, damaging alpha MSH. Next, Marcons colonize and produce a matrix. The polysaccharide matrix is known as biofilm. This barrier blocks the immune cells and that's how the bacteria survive. Okay, then Marcons can cause differential gene activation in the host. So it affects your mitochondria pretty deeply. Uh, especially in the host, meaning us who are exposed, host is the person exposed or going through biotoxin illness. Um, so one moment. Okay. So it can cause 
mitochondrial hypometabolism, mitochondrial reduced function, gene activation. Remember, uh, if many of you may recall or remember that, you know, when when I discuss your genetics at your individual appointments, uh, I, I, you know, many of you come to me all uh, fearful, a lot of anxiety. Oh my gosh, doctor, I have MTHFR. I have CBS, I have this mutation, the VDR, I have so, you know, uh, so many genetic mutations, even the BRCA one, right, for cancer and arthritis and, you know, good, that's good information, but that is information. That doesn't mean that all of those mutations are currently expressing as well are currently activated. That doesn't mean that. Just because you have MTHFR doesn't mean it's happening in the here and the now. It's not. It may not be true, right? So no need to panic if you have all of these mutations. Um, what, is a, what is an extremely powerful influencer for genetics? Epigenetics. So clean up your act, clean up your environment, clean up your body, and you will see epigenetics do its magic. Okay, so, you know, just one perspective of uh, looking at things. All right, so that's three. Number four, Marcons also release hemolysins, which will cause an increase in the pro-inflammatory cytokines. What does that result in? Further inflammation, okay? So this is Marcons explained, and this is the reason why your nasal swab is important. Your nasal spray, the treatment of Marcons is important. Right, many people, now let me stop the share and come back to full screen, yes. So um, many people report tremendous gains, right? Cognitive gains, brain fog, decision-making, um, reading, understanding, meaning nonverbal, communication, right? Understanding. I, I have children on, you know, uh, on the spectrum whose nonverbal communication uh, has expanded after treating Marcons to understanding multiple languages. You know, whereas uh, when we started with them, there was no understanding even of the primary language spoken at home. So tremendous. Of course, you know, speech is a very um, complicated and higher function that requires integration between both the hemispheres in the brain. So that again, you know, will be a whole other video. Send your questions and I'm, I'm happy to discuss that function. You know, like, um, you know, one of the most common questions is, uh, will my child ever speak? Will, um, you know, will language like uh, spoken language ever come in and then for those of you who do achieve like we are able to achieve spoken language then the question I get is when is it going to be conversational so it's it's like you know parents always want the absolute best for the child and then you know they are very eager to see those games but um, these two videos Will, will go a long way in you understanding what's going on in your body and in the body of your child as well, right? So do your best with the nasal spray. Um, hey, one thing I, I, I wanted to emphasize, let me, let me explain that. Now, uh, many of you have uh, children who are not able, like you're not able to do the nasal swab for them. And, you know, I've also seen that uh, many primary care practitioners, absolutely well-meaning, good-hearted practices, you know, um, who are not educated or aware of biotoxin illness, they're not able to go in deep enough. So one easy way of making them understand, you know, if it, if you're taking the nasal swab kit to your doctor, 
local doctor, uh, just you you might just want to mention that it needs to be done as deeply as you would do a COVID test. Okay, so that that is helpful. Um, now, if it is absolutely impossible for you to do a nasal swab for your child, then do it for the primary caregiver because morphons are very easily transmitted. Uh, you know, like for example, if a mom is breastfeeding, the child is right there, like you know, in your airspace, so to speak. Um, obviously, families share airspace where you're breathing on each other, you know, family time, hugs and love. Um, so spouses, partners, children acquire Marcons through each other. So if a primary caregiver would like to do the swab on them instead of the child, that's perfectly fine. You know, if you feel that the, the child might, might be traumatized or it's not possible to do it, no worries. Um, oftentimes I'll find that either mom or dad have like tremendous sinus issues or allergies or, you know, some kind of a nasal problem. Um, so I suggest that that parent do the nasal swab. And it's also important, the visual test that I ask you to do, the nasal swab and the visual test go hand in hand, right? You know, it's, it's part of the diagnosis. So remember to do that. Like, uh, obviously, you know, if you're the patient, you should do it. And it can be done at home. Not a problem, right? Right on your computer. Uh, if it's a child, then remember both the parents or one parent and one sibling should do the visual test. All right, good. So I hope um, this has been helpful. And I will... See you at the next podcast. Until then, as always, keep smiling and take good care of each other. Bye for now. Namaste. Thank you for joining Master Herbalist Dr. Jody A. Dashaw, Director of the BioNexus Health Clinic and BioNexus Herbals, on the BioNexus Health Podcast, where we explore and share information and stories about recovering and healing from chronic and environmental illnesses such as mold biotoxin illness, Lyme disease autism spectrum disorder, fatigue, Crohn's and colitis, mast cell activation syndrome, PANS, and more. Please help us grow our message by subscribing to our podcast channel and sharing the podcast on your social networks. For more information visit bionexushealth.com. Information within this video, audio, or text, collectively known as the podcast, has not been reviewed by the FDA. Nothing within the podcast is intended as or should be construed as medical advice. Information is for general informational and educational purposes only. Consumers of the podcast should consult with their healthcare practitioners for medical recommendations. Seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider. Do not disregard the advice of a healthcare provider based on any information from the podcast. The information within the podcast may contain information concerning dietary supplements or over-the-counter products that are not drugged. Our dietary supplement products are not intended for use as a means to cure, treat, prevent, diagnose, or mitigate any disease or other medical or abnormal condition.